this is going to be our star algebra one reference materials brain dump the idea behind this is that you come here right when you get your test you write down all of these notes all over this paper and we'll practice it so many times that it'll just come really natural then once you have them all written down take a couple deep breaths and then you start your test every time you look back at your reference materials you have all these notes here to spark your brain to help you answer all the questions on the test so this is going to be extremely helpful for you you do have to memorize it but it's all stuff we already know it's just kind of putting it into one spot so that uh, we can look at it and real quickly get the information that we need so let's just kind of go through it and see what's important about the things that were given here um, on our test first thing is talking about perfect square trinomials so this is just a type of factoring right if I have a plus B squared I know that that means a plus B times a plus B so I'm gonna write that down to remind myself because sometimes that squared can be confusing and we don't want to do it the wrong way the second one is going to be the same thing we have a minus B squared that's going to equal a minus B times a minus B and with all of this stuff we're going to write it exactly the same every single time it's just like working out your muscles getting muscle memory we're getting some memory going on with our brains here so that when we see this we automatically know oh yeah I gotta write something right here oh that's right this is what it is okay we have difference of squares this is a reminder to you that a squared minus b squared is not the same as a minus b squared this is different it's a minus b times a plus b so that is there for you then we go into the laws of exponents the laws of powers okay we did a lot of work with these but it's been a while and so we need some refreshers so when we look at this we see product of powers so multiplying powers with the same base and we know we add the exponents quotient of powers or dividing powers with the same base we subtract the exponents something very important here is that that they must have the same bases so we're going to make that note for ourselves must have same bases so the, these both have to be the same or these both have to be the same we cannot multiply powers if they don't have the same base so that's going to be very important then we have power to power and this is what sort of gets referred to as like distributing and there's some very very important things about this and the main one that gets confused oftentimes is that we can only distribute that power which means multiply n times m if there's no addition or subtraction in the parentheses so I'm going to make myself that note only distribute if there is no addition or subtraction inside the parentheses okay only distribute that exponent if there is no addition or subtraction inside the parentheses and if you remember we talked about this if there's a, a coefficient out in front we distribute when there is addition and subtraction so that's why this is important to make note of because it's different okay and then we're going to give ourselves a little example on this one because this example only shows us if there is um, a single base in the in the parentheses but what if we had something like 2xy squared if we had 2xy squared all raised to the fourth power we know that we would have to distribute that to the coefficient and each of the variables and that is something that is a common mistake we don't want to forget that especially on a big test so I know that the 2 would be raised to the fourth power the X would be raised to the fourth power the Y would be raised to the eighth power its own exponent of 2 times 
the exponent of 4. So we want to make ourselves a note that you will distribute to the coefficient, the 2 in this example, and all variables. Okay, and I'm giving the example on this one, and I'm going to write it down every single time, and I'm going to do the same exact example every single time, so that when I get on that test, I don't think, oh, I only distribute to this whatever's last, whatever's closest to it. That's not how it works. The, the exponent on the outside is going to be distributed to every coefficient and variable inside, keeping in mind it's only one term because there's no addition or subtraction in that parentheses, okay? If there were addition and subtraction in the parentheses, we would have this type of problem. That's the difference, okay? All right, and then we have rational exponents and negative exponents, and that just gives you an example. Those are, rational exponents are very rarely referred to, but if they are, you have an example there. And then negative exponents, we put a one over it and remove the negative, okay? All right, let's talk about linearity. We spent a lot of time talking about linear equations. So they give us the standard form, ax plus by equals c, the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Let's label. We know that m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So we're going to label those every single time, just as a reminder, m is the slope, B is the y-intercept. Now there is something I want to uh, add here in slope-intercept form. I want to talk about a direct variation. Direct variation. Hopefully you remember that a direct variation, it's written in the form y equals kx, where k is your slope. And we talked about it would be the same as just writing y equals mx. And then notice there's no plus b. That's because the y-intercept in this case equals 0. So we're going to write this reminder to ourselves every time we see this math chart. A direct variation is y equals kx, where k is the slope, and the y-intercept is 0. That means that this line passes through... the origin through the point zero, zero. A direct variation goes through zero, zero. So if you get a question that asks you which of the following is a direct variation, all you have to look for is which line goes through zero, zero. Which line has a y-intercept of zero? So we want to make that note for ourselves on there. All right, then we're given point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then we're given the slope of a line. So many things with slope of a line that we want to talk about. One is all the different words or phrases that can be used to ask you to find the slope. So we know one of them is rate of change. The rate of change is the way it's usually asked um, if you're given a word problem. We know the letter M represents the slope. We know that the slope formula is found using Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 which is the same as the change in y over the change in x, which we use when we're dealing with a table. And finally, if we're dealing with a graph, we find the slope using rise over. So these are all ways to say slope. One other thing that's really important is that you understand that x1 y1 just means the x from your first point and the y from your first point. x2, y2 are the x and the y from your second point. So we always label our points with x1, y1, x2, y2 before we try to plug into the formula. Okay, lots of good information about linear equations. There's a couple more things I want to talk about before we move on to quadratics. One is that we know um, Parallel lines have the same slopes, and perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So we're going to want to add that in, but we're kind of running out of room here. We're going to use the back. 
So keep that in mind when we talk more about linear equations. The other thing I want to talk about is domain and range. Domain and range goes with linear equations and quadratic functions. Both what you could be asked to find the domain and range of. So I'm going to turn the paper this way, and I'm going to do the domain and range right along this side. We know that domain deals with our x's. Okay, domain is our x's. And for the domain, we're always going to move from left to right. Okay, if it's, a, if it's a, a discrete graph, we know that we just list each point that we find. If it's continuous, remember that we'll be writing it in inequality notation. We'll be using inequalities. So it'll be some number is less than or less than and equal to x less than the larger number. So the number from the left is going to, the furthest left is going to go here, less than x is the domain, less than the number. Okay, and we know for range we're dealing with the y's. And those move bottom to top. We always move bottom to top when we're finding the range. The notation for continuous is going to look the same. It's going to be the smallest number, less than y, less than the largest number. Bottom number, less than y, less than top number. Okay? And then one other important piece of domain and range is that we have to remember that if we just have greater than or less than, less than or greater than, that's going to be an open dot. It's represented with an open dot or a dashed line. Okay? If we have less than or equal or greater than or equal, that's going to be represented with a closed dot or a solid line. So these are going to be our reminders for when we're dealing with domain and range and when we're dealing with inequalities, how we're going to represent those on a graph. If you have a solid line or a colored in dot, these may be equal to. Okay? So this is the information that we'll write down about domain and range. Now let's go back to quadratics. Quadratic equations. All right, so it gives us the standard form, which f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and right in here, you know what? Let's add the parent function. Parent function for a quadratic is y equals x squared. And let's do the same for linear. By standard form, let's write the parent function. And that is going to be y equals x. Remember, the parent function is just the most basic function in that family. So having the parent function is important because sometimes they may ask you in a question to compare an equation to the parent function. So you must know what the parent function is in order to be able to do that. Okay? All right, now vertex form. We have equals a times x minus h squared plus k. For this, a very important thing to know is the vertex, which we know is either your minimum or your maximum, is going to be represented by h, k. So we know if we're going to be plugging in, the h and the k are coming from the vertex. Okay? Quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You probably all know it because of our beautiful little song, but if you don't, it's written right here for you, so don't mess the formulas up. All of this stuff is given information, okay? So we can't, can't make mistakes on the stuff they gave us, all right? So for the quadratic formula, a big major reminder is what are you finding? Well, you're finding the solutions. You're finding the solutions, and we need to remember that the x-intercepts are the same thing as the solutions, are the same things as the zeros or the roots. So that's what you're finding. If you're using the quadratic formula, you're finding 
either the solution to the quadratic or the x-intercept to the quadratic or the zero or the roots because it's all the same. It's all those words mean the same point on the graph, okay? And then we have the axis of symmetry, which can be found if we remove, oh, excuse me, if we remove the square root and the discriminant, negative b over 2a will get us that axis of symmetry. All right, so that's the given stuff on our star algebra one reference materials chart. But we are going to actually add even more stuff. We added stuff to what was given, and then we're gonna put a little more information that's really important um, on here as well, so that as we're testing, we can reference it, okay? And the one, the one equation that they don't give you that I think they should is exponential, the exponential quadrat, I mean, not quadratic, excuse me, the exponential equation. So exponential, okay? And the, the form of an exponential is f of x equals a, times b raised to the t, sometimes it'll say to the x. But with exponential, there's growth and there's decay. Growth and decay. And you'll see the equations sometimes look different than this. The way that we typically see that the equation is y, or f of x, equals a, 1 plus r raised to the t, and for decay, y equals a 1 minus r raised to the t, which makes sense, right? Plus for growing, minus for decaying, okay? This 1 plus r piece or 1 minus r piece, that's your b in the exponential formula when it's written this way, okay? And we need to know what all these letters mean. On the test, there will be some questions about exponential functions. The main thing that you have to be able to see are, are, are the formula. You're gonna have to be able to know what do these letters mean, where would I put stuff? So A is gonna be your initial amount. The initial amount, whatever you start with. And R is going to be the rate, the, the rate, so rate of growth or decay, and it needs to be written as a decimal, okay? The rate as a decimal. And then T is going to be time, all right? So this is important information for exponential functions. We're going to take our math chart and we're going to flip it over to the back side and we're going to write some more notes on here and if you're starting to feel like dang this is a lot of stuff it will come so easy we will practice it so many times that when you look at the math chart your brain will go oh yep i need to write something here i need to write something here this goes here this is what i write here and it, it will not be a problem then when you get on the test you'll all master it because you'll have all your stuff down and that will be excellent because you're all capable and you can all do that so let's go to the back. So we flip our math chart over and we're going to kind of divide it in half. So just imagine your paper kind of cut in half and we're going to talk about a couple important things. One is systems of equations. There's really nothing on the front side about systems. Remember systems of equations is where we have two equations, can be more, and we have different types of solutions. So there's three options. When we're working with a system of equations, we can have one solution, we can have no solutions, or we can have infinitely many solutions. So we can have one, we can have none, oh, none, or we can have an infinite number. Oops, infinite. Okay. And now let's talk about when each of these happens. All right, so if we're looking at an equation and you're solving an equation, and let's say you get something like x equals two. You have one solution. That one solution is gonna be the point where your lines cross each other. 
So if you have lines that intersect, when you solve the equation, you're gonna get something like this because you have intersecting lines and they cross at one point and that's the solution. If you solve the equation and you get something like one equals eight, that is false. One equals eight is not true. That means your graph is going to be parallel lines. And remember on the front, I said we're gonna talk more about parallel and perpendicular back here. There's a very important note to write here. These have the same slopes. Parallel lines have the same slopes, and that is critical. You've got to be able to recognize that. And then if it has an infinite number of solutions, you will get a true statement, something like 5 equals 5. And that's when your lines are just laying right on top of each other. Two lines laying right on top of each other. It's actually the same line. So their equations are going to be the same, right? So they're going to have the same slope and same y-intercept. Okay? And when we're dealing with systems of equations, the calculator comes in handy. And this is going to be super helpful. You're going to want to write down second trace. Second trace and then number five is intersect. So we get our math chart. We dump all this information on there. Then we're in the middle of the test and we're like, oh no, I can't remember what button I pushed to find where the, the lines cross. And boom, we come back to this second trace, number five, you got it. Okay, um, a note to put down here, perpendicular lines. They have opposite reciprocal slopes. So remember that means change the sign, flip the fraction. Okay, perpendicular. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So there's your little, little brain dump for systems of equations. Then we have inequalities. Remember we did solving equations and then we did solving inequalities. Then we did systems of equations, then we did systems of equalities. So we want you to make yourself a note about inequalities. And remember, that would be anything with a less than, greater than, less than or equal, or greater than or equal to sign. And the most important thing you have to remember when it comes to inequalities is that if you multiply or divide, both sides of the inequality, both sides, if you multiply or divide, both sides by a negative only if it's by a negative you must flip the inequality flip the sign so if it was less than it needs to be greater than and, and vice versa for inequalities if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative you flip the sign all right, I've dumped all that information on my paper. I'm going to dump one more little section, and that's going to be about calculator use. When we're using the calculator, one thing super important to remember is how to reset it. You're going to reset it with second plus seven one two so if you've adjusted windows and changed table settings and done anything to make your calculator change and you need to get back to the just regular settings second plus seven one two will do that okay then remember the y equals button this is where you're going to type in any equations you type in your equation here and then all those buttons straight across from there have functions but you got to have an equation of y equals first so let's break this down. 
if we are dealing with linear, which y equals x, that's my parent function, right? So something with an x, linear. I have a very important process. I have the stat edit. That is where I can enter my table. Okay, remember it's going to come up as L1, L2. The L1 is going to be all your X's. The L2 is going to be all your Y's. So stat edit. Once we do that, we're going to go stat calc. And then number four is going to be the linear regression. This is how you can write the equation of a linear function given either a table or even just two points, you can write the equation. Now let's talk about quadratics. Their parent function we said is y equals x squared. Okay, The main function on the calculator we will use with quadratics is second trace. Second trace. If we choose option two, number two, that's the zeros. Remember we said zeros are the same thing as solutions or x-intercepts. Okay, that's how we find the zeros. If we choose number three, that's the minimum. And number four is the maximum. We know the minimum or the maximum is the vertex of the quadratic. Okay, it's going to be given to you like x y and keep in mind x is your axis of symmetry and y is your min or max so between all the given on the formula chart and and the notes that we're going to add to it and your calculator you can do everything that this test is going to ask you for. You've got this. Let's get this memorized and dump it on there as soon as we can every time we use the STAR Algebra 1 reference materials.